Hey guys, Aaron here with another video. Uh, God bless you. Thank you for watching this. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for uh, showing an interest in what the Lord has done in my life. Um, so today I want to talk to you about what the Lord has done in my life, obviously. And um, I'd like to go back around seven months ago, last year, around October, something like that. And around that time, the Lord spoke to me when I was in a place of disobedience. Now, it wasn't too bad with uh, sin, but I was not obeying God with my studies because God had called me to study. And I'm um, in a place and a time of preparation. And um, so I had, had been putting that off and I, I had been doing other uh, stuff that wastes time. I mean, anything that doesn't serve God. We have to consider what we do with our time, right? And uh, we have to redeem the time for the days are evil, as Paul said, by the Holy Spirit. So yeah, I was in a place of disobedience where I hadn't been studying, and so God had to somehow get that to turn around in me. And um, what I do remember is, now what I'm about to say is um, about that, I don't know exactly if this is what turned me around, but this is what I remember. And um, there were some other things but this really stuck out to me, and I was driving home on my motorbike from English teaching uh, as a foreign language here in Asia, and uh, it was really rainy, uh, really rainy, and the roads were kind of flooded. Um, it was some place in town I hadn't been because they had assigned some random campuses, as they're called. I think I was lost a bit, and it was really rainy, and thunderings happened and lightning struck and I thought wow I'm in a place of disobedience what if one of these lightning bolts strikes me dead you know and uh, I remember on the motorbike I'll share this actually I remember kind of working myself into this weird place where I was using a couple of uh, not the worst but a couple of cuss words and I I remember thinking, I can say these words, I, I can say these words. Oh, I just said it, there I said it, I said a bad word. Uh, you know, I was in a really weird spot there. It's kind of a weird, weird story there, but maybe some of you can relate to that. It's like where you kind of tease, like tempt God or something, it's weird. But yeah, uh, I stopped doing that, of course, <laughs> thank God. and. Uh, Fear of God got a hold of me again, and uh, shortly after that, I printed out my next module for studying, and I studied it, and that was one of the best courses I've ever done in my life, and uh, I think God handpicked that one out for me to do at that moment, at that point in time, because it really, I was in prayer, prayer dynamics, biblical life, prayer dynamics, and it really spoke to me, and uh, I learned a lot about important things. Uh, I'll just share this very quickly. For example, one of the things that I learned about was about the uh, tabernacle and about the Holy of Holies, the holy place, and the outer court, and the instruments of worship in there, and uh, also about the temple, out, uh, about the altar, rather, outside, and um, some really neat stuff. And uh, one of the things that really spoke to me is, you know how the, the candlestick in the, the holy place? It's called the menorah, right? And um, the, the priest had to continually produce olive oil for that thing to burn. And um, what produces olive oil? The crushing of olives. And just like that, we have to also produce oil in us. And uh, we have to crush, basically, ourselves before God, you know, be brokenhearted in a way, kind of contrite before the Lord and continually produce the olive oil for the Holy Spirit to burn within us all deep and bright. And we also have to fan into flames that fire within us. And all of us know what gets us in fire for God personally. So that's what we got to do, guys. we got to get ourselves in fire for God sometimes. And um, yeah, that's what I did. And uh, that really changed my life, guys. And uh, I left boyhood behind, childhood behind. And uh, I believe I can... Now confidently quote what Paul also said and repeat after him. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. 
but when I became a man, I gave up childish ways. Um, and um, occur me, that passage is uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 11, and I, it can be interpreted numerous ways, but for me it's kind of the literal translation, the literal interpretation, um, because I've been wasting time with things that do not build up, and um, they don't profit me in the long run. And uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for listening thus far, guys. I got a couple more minutes to share here. Um, so that began a whole process of transformation, and uh, ever since then I've been studying basically every day. Uh, every day that I can study, I study, because I don't see a reason not to. I'm determined, I'm motivated, I'm encouraged in the Lord, and uh, yeah. So I have been doing that, and that's that brings me to my next point. Uh, recently I earned my uh, year one, which is called the Diploma, so it's the equivalent of one Bible college year, the Diploma of Biblical Studies is what I have, and um, that's my first um, academic thing that I have, and uh, I'm really happy about that, and I, I've learned a lot of things about the Word, about God, through these studies, and I'm still continuing. I want to earn a bachelor degree, which is four years, or the equivalent of four years, at Bible College, um, is what this college I'm enrolled in says, um, because they get their own things. They got different uh, programs, and one program is basically one year equivalent to the standard Bible College or seminary. And uh, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. I'm working on my year two, uh, the associate, and it's called the Associate of Biblical Studies. And um, yeah, also making good progress there, and I'm really glad. I'm, really rejoicing with the Lord and um, I'm really excited about what God's doing in my life but also in the lives of my family members and uh, I'd like to also share that my brother is also whom I guess you haven't seen but my brother is also being transformed by the power of God I'm seeing more life I'm seeing transformation I'm seeing um, bonds broken um, yeah it's really fantastic and uh, let's see, I've got a couple notes here. What else haven't I shared? Uh, I have clarity of life and purpose, determination, joy, uh, life abundant. It's really good. And um, yeah, also with the, uh, God is good. Over the next couple of weeks and months, I'd like to share a couple of really neat insights I've gained from, from my studies because um, I just want to share some really good stuff such as that with the, with the olive oil and breaking before the Lord and stuff like that, which I which have really helped me in my walk. And um, yeah, I, I don't ever want to set myself up as a teacher uh, because I know what James said, not many of us should become teachers and uh, because they will be judged more strictly by the Lord. Um, but I think I can share a couple of insights. Um, yeah, it doesn't make me a teacher just makes me one a servant of God who is on fire for God and wants to uh, pass on some of the love to you from the Lord and some of the insights I have gained. And uh, on that very topic, I, I want to share some, some of the ideas I have, uh, some of what I've learned, just in kind of um, quick notes, in kind of quick words. I have a notepad right here and I have some ideas written down that I want to uh, turn into videos uh, eventually and um, maybe you can um, I don't know you can even comment on something you'd like to hear about perhaps I don't know but um, I just read a couple of them to you it's not about you it's about God it's not about us it's not about me it's about God and uh, it's really powerful our strength is the joy of the Lord I've made a video about that before if you want the kingdom and its goods or resources, you're going to have to take it by force, according to Jesus. I believe that's Matthew 11, 12. Um, the violent take it by force. The kingdom. The master parable. That one was really awesome. The master parable. Um, I, um, it's found in Mark, I think, chapter, 11, chapter 9. I don't remember, but... Uh, that one was really good, what I learned from that whole thing. It was really good. 
uh, the crushing of the olives for oil, and our responsibility to be repentant, contrite before the Lord, what I shared before, fanning the flames and stoking the fire, um, love and its power, God is love, it's the greatest force of the universe. God always expects us to do whatever we can for him at all times. That one was kind of a tough pill to swallow for me. The power of praise and worship, singing hymns, psalms, and spiritual songs. I tell you what about that, just really quickly, I think uh, without praise and worship, uh, I would be dead or I'd be like, really bad, in a bad spot because sometimes you know, the devil gets you low and you just gotta worship through it and build yourself up in the Lord, amen. Um, yeah, that's powerful. I don't know everything and neither do you. There is power in remaining humble and teachable. Make use of God's provided resources such as teachers' materials, pastors, you know, the fivefold ministry from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 12. Oh, that's that's really important. Suffering perfects us. Make no provision for the flesh. Guard your heart with all diligence. The tongue is the power of life and death. Fasting. And this one's really important. The forgotten dream of transformation of the journey. You know, guys, we're all on a journey. And um, we're all at different places in our journey, and that's okay. Everybody has their own spot. We don't. God always looks at us with the potential we have in Christ. He always sees what we're gonna be. He always sees the greatest potential, guys. And that's so powerful. I think that's what we. Ha that's how we have to treat each other with uh, the eyes of God. Jesus called Judas my friend. He called him friend when he was about to betray Jesus. Wow, that's so powerful. Um, so yeah, um, that's kind of my journey over the past seven or so months. Um, I hope that some of this speaks to you and um, maybe you can just kind of rejoice in my victories also. And I rejoice in your victories. If you have any victories, leave them down in the, info, uh, in the comment section rather. And uh, yeah. Let's live in harmony with one another. Uh, rejoice with those who are rejoicing, as Paul said, something like that. Weep with those who weep, mourn with those who mourn. Let's live in harmony with one another. If some of you are suffering out there, um, you can leave a prayer request. Let's pray for one another. Let's encourage one another. And all the more as we see the day drawing near. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, God bless you, and he is faithful, guys, and he is good. Thank you so much. Goodbye. See you next time.